Hello everybody, welcome back to Easy Weeknight Cooking with Heart's Desire Spice Blends. And if you saw the post on our page earlier this afternoon, evening, whatever, uh, we have snow. And so uh, if we have interesting things going on with the internet and power, you will probably be the first to know. If, I, if I'm not, you know, go figure, right? But, so we're going to go ahead and uh, have a really great comfort food for our easy weeknight cooking tonight. We're going to be using provincial poultry and this is veggie filled meatloaf. There's a history behind this one. So years ago, my uh, stepdad used to be a trucker and his doctor said, congratulations, you're almost diabetic. Do something about this. So we did and he wanted to make sure he had low carbohydrate comfort food on the road so he didn't get too tempted by these greasy spoon places along the way and so we would make him all sorts of dinners freeze them and send them with him he had a lunch pail size uh, oven to go with him and this veggie filled meatloaf was a consistent request okay constant request forget about it, consistent but it's a really great way to hide your vegetables and make them really taste phenomenal. And also have one of those just great comfort foods that you always want to have. I mean, meatloaf is great stuff if it tastes great. And so we're going to be using a lot of our ingredients to not only get a lot more vegetables hiding in this stuff, and yes, they do hide, it's great. But we're also going to introduce a lot of flavor here. And so we're going to be using things like Worcestershire sauce. We're going to be using tomato paste, onions, celery, carrots. Yes, carrots. And of course, we're going to throw the obvious vegetables in there as well. This is a bag of peas and carrots. You can use corn and all that kind of great stuff if you like. Uh, we're going to be, of course, needing about a pound of beef for this uh, recipe or whatever ground meat you've got. It works. Trust me. We've done this with sausage before and it turns out amazing that's not so low carbon low salt but it's still amazing so the way we're going to be doing this tonight we're going to be cutting out the salt and we're going to be cutting out the carbohydrates and or at least most of the carbohydrates and so what i have here is you're going to need about a cup of breadcrumbs now you can substitute things like keto bread for this dry out up to three slices and go ahead and crumble them up you're good and so i uh, we're going to be of course needing some sort of space with this because otherwise it's just bland and dry and yuck right so what are we using ye old provincial poultry and so last week we did a really great beef stew with this stuff and it does tremendous in actually uh meatloaf as well so let's go ahead and get started Where's our recipe? It's right in the description. So you can follow along if you like. And we're going to need, of course, one small onion, one pound of meat, or uh, what well, this is ground beef. I've used elk, I've used chicken, I've used pork, I've used turkey. And uh, for you who do not eat meat, I'm sure there are substitutes available for this. I've seen several recipes. So I'm I'm pretty sure you can use some sort of grain legume mix for this. We're going to need about one large rib of celery. And this beauty, look at this, gorgeous stuff. This came from the farmer's market. Got a great bundle of this stuff. I'm going to be dehydrating a whole bunch of it. Why? Because I don't always get celery. It always goes bad before I can use it all. So I'm going to use up some of this and the rest is going in the dehydrator so I can get celery anytime I like. It's great. So one rib of celery. We're going to need uh, between two medium, about two medium, one large carrot or about nine mini carrots. 
We're gonna need three eggs, and that's gonna act as a really great binder. Not just the bread breadcrumbs, but the eggs will actually bring this together and make sure it doesn't just fall apart and crumble on you. So uh, you're going to need about one cup of breadcrumbs. Now the Worcestershire is optional. We're going to be putting in about two tablespoons. You can put in less or more to your own taste. We're going to, of course, need about two teaspoons of provincial poultry. Uh, about half this bag of peas and carrots, that's about six ounces, my lovelies. And you can also put things like, we put uh, brown, sliced brown olives in there, we've put bits of broccoli, we've put all sorts of stuff in here. So it's great for hiding lots of vegetables. Score! We are also going to need some sort of barbecue sauce because really, honestly, what is meatloaf without barbecue sauce slathered all over the top? Seriously. And what we did tonight is we took ye old store-bought and put in a little bit of chili bowl and it snazzes it right up, seriously. So, why don't we get started? Oh, we're also gonna need a food processor. And this is how we're gonna hide everything. So, we're going to start with our rib of celery. Go ahead and chop off this nasty old land down here uh, to where it, after you've washed it, of course. Go ahead and chop off the nasty old end and the uh, bits of the tops that are not looking so great. And we're going to chop this into large chunks and then just throw the whole thing into the food processor. Seriously, how easy can you get? So the reason I'm doing this is when you chop up your vegetables super fine, they actually end up looking like the ground meat you're putting them in. And I've fed this to six-year-olds who don't like vegetables, and it works. Big score. So the next thing we're going to do is also chop up our onion. And we're going to quarter this. Go ahead and I'm going to break my cardinal rule. I'm going to cut off both the root and the stem ends. And I've got a handy little bowl over here this time so I don't mess up my workspace. This is great. So cut off both the root and the stem end and pick them right off. Just cut this right into quarters. And it's going to be so much easier to uh, peel because you don't have all sorts of you know, you, you don't have to worry about as much of the curve of the onion. And now, go ahead and just plop that right on in, the whole nine yards. We're going to plop our uh, onion in quarters. We're going to put our celery and we're going to put our carrots in this food processor. Gonna chop them up really fine. Then we're going to empty that into a bowl right here and we'll go ahead and go for the rest of it there that's when we're going to be adding the rest of our ingredients and then finding ourselves some really great little uh um honestly one pound loaf pans are my favorite and if i go ahead and put these in one pound loaf pans they cook in about half an hour and you've got serving size stuff there it's a meal and a loaf pan seriously it works so well and you do not you get you get to feel like you're getting away with something because you do not always have to put a vegetable next to it yes score big score i love that just dig right in so i about nine of these babies okay so I need to stop that. I've got a couple of those right on in here and they are smelling so good. So anyway, that is that should be well and truly done by the time we are done with this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And these are going to be a, a variety of sizes. i uh, go ahead and throw a couple more. And why, why am I using carrots? Really? Come on. The reason I'm using carrots 
is because of the native sweetness of that wonderful root vegetable, that and the color. So uh, when you're doing, dealing with meatloaf, usually it's drenched in ketchup by the time it's all done and you put it in the loaf pan while the whole thing is just drenched in ketchup and then you put more on top. Well, if we're cutting down, if we're cutting down on the carbs and such like that, we want to reduce the amount of processor sugars by a great amount. That means using a lot of our raw ingredients to make up the lack that are not super sugary, but have that sweetness to them. Carrots go wonderful that way. They add a ton of body, they add a ton of flavor, and they add extra uh, sweetness to your meatloaf that you wouldn't have otherwise had. So why don't we go ahead and start this baby. This is a wonderful food processor. Nice and quiet. I love it. Seriously. So you're going to chop this until it's in really fine pieces. Okay. And also, you're gonna, probably going to want to go ahead and scrape down the sides and chop some more. And that's exactly what I need to do because we've got some pretty large pieces up at the top and finer pieces down at the bottom. Now, there's a little bit more reason for some of the other uh, some of the other parts of this recipe that I've been using, some other ingredients. Like, uh, why so much celery? And honestly, we use that much celery because celery actually concentrates a lot of potassium and a lot of other uh, really great electrolytes. And what's more, it adds a salty taste. So if you're cutting down the salt, you're cutting down the sugar, this is, use your other natural ingredients to go ahead and add the flavor that you want into your meals and you will be perfect. Now, if you're really sensitive, run this through a nutrition calculator. You'll be gold. So, we have a really good, we've got a really good mix here, and I'm, there we go. This stuff is just really finely chopped, and that's what I look for. I look for this to look an awful lot like the ground meat that we're going to be putting it in. And so, if I can do that, I've, I'm, my work is done, pretty much. And it didn't take a lot of work to do this. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and push this off to the side and bring the old trusty bowl over. Alrighty, go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm gonna knock my blades off here and scrape them off a little bit because I want all those beautiful vegetables in my meatloaf, not on the blade. So, go ahead and put this vegetable mixture right on into your bowl. And then we're going to be putting in about half of the meat, putting in the rest of our ingredients, and, and making sure it's all incorporated. And then we're going to put in the rest of our meat. And the reason I do that is because I found that when dealing with, well, when we were doing this originally, uh, we would do between two and four pounds of meat at a time, you know, between a double and quadruple recipe of this. And handling all that at once just was very ungainly. We didn't, we don't have a, a, a bakery a, a stand mixer or anything like that. So that was really kind of, kind of tough sometimes. So we learned how to do this in stages. Now, go ahead and Get about half of your ground meat and break that up right on in your bowl. Put the other ground meat aside and I'm going to rinse my hands, my darnness. Alrighty. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put those aside and this can go off to the side as well. Our next thing is going to be I'm adding three eggs. That's not a lot of eggs, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But we're going to need the eggs in order to bind all those vegetables in with meat. And our breadcrumbs are going to do the same thing. So, three eggs. One. Two. Woohoo! And three. 
and we need ourselves two teaspoons of provincial poultry. Do not skimp on the provincial poultry here, guys, because that's going to add a whole lot of flavor that otherwise you're not going to be able to get. So spices in something like this are very, very important. It adds a dimension of flavor that's so wonderful and um, will honestly make the neighborhood wonder what's going on at your house and why weren't they invited. Seriously. So, next is also going to be, whoop, come back here, tomato paste. And I chose tomato paste over tomato sauce here for a very good reason. Now, tomato sauce is wonderful stuff. It's got a lot of flavor, but tomato paste has a lot more concentrated flavor. And since we are going with so much vegetable matter in here, if we were to go for tomato sauce, we'd get a very watery mess by the time we were done. This way, we get a lot of concentrated flavor in that tomato paste, and we don't get the watery mess. Now, if you've worked much with tomato paste, You've worked with it in soups and stews and all sorts of stuff. We used it in a stew last week and often a very concentrated tomato flavor in something like this can be just so great and it can actually take the place of a lot of that ketchup or barbecue, barbecue sauce that, uh, that our moms used to make or our grandmas used to make use in this, in the traditional meatloaf. And it also adds a bit of sweetness to things that's really wonderful, but mainly we're looking for that tomato-based flavor that just blooms all your flavors really well. So, we have our tomato paste in there. And, like I said earlier, Worcestershire is optional. Definitely shake the jar first. And up to two tablespoons of that. You know, honestly, one tablespoon is just fine. And if you are seriously uh, restricting the salt, skip it, add a little bit of extra fresh cracked pepper. And that will add not only some fruity notes, but also that peppery bite that you're gonna be looking for when you miss that Worcestershire. <clears throat> okay, go ahead and break up your eggs. And the last thing, one of the last things we need to do is, Grab our, uh, grab our breadcrumbs. And I'm gonna mix this up before I put in the breadcrumbs because it's gonna be just a little easier. Breaking up the meat, definitely, right? So I do not see any comments yet. That's not exactly a bad thing. But do me a favor, tell me that you're watching and if you want to ask questions now is your chance I will definitely get to that if I see the comment so this time I think I may be able to get away with not having the messy cook batch <laughs> awesome all right now breadcrumbs this is really kind of fun what I have here is a few pieces of bread that I went ahead and just dried. You can leave it out on the counter for two days in a low moisture room and you're great. Or, honestly, I put these in my dehydrator for, you know, an hour and they came out, you know, very, very dry. And so it's, you just go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag like this unless you're going to be using like progressive progresso uh, uh, breadcrumbs or something like that. You're gonna want about a cup. Just go ahead and squish them in order to break them up. And they make a very satisfying crunch when you do this. Go ahead and just break them up nice and fine. And they will actually absorb an awful lot of moisture coming from this meatloaf. And it will help also bind it together, much like the eggs. So I've tried this with only eggs, I've tried this with only breadcrumbs. Really, honestly, you kind of need both. And so here we go. Go ahead and one cup there, guys. And that's about two pieces of bread. And this can go off to the side. Now, go ahead and get those incorporating in there. And we need 
our other half pound of meat. Yes. Break that up before you just plop it in because that way it'll make stirring a whole lot easier. So what are we doing here? We've got ourselves our provincial poultry in here. We've got one whole onion. We've got one rib of celery, large rib of celery. I use whatever you need to in order to make up about that one rib of celery. If you've got, you know, three tiny ones, that's great. Or, you know, five tiny ones or, or whatever works. And uh, now, about now is the time when you just kind of give up and use your hands. Now, some of you go, well, go ahead and use gloves if you want, or go ahead and, and sweat it out with a spoon. Me, I, I don't usually cringe at this kind of stuff. So, about now is when I just go ahead and use my hands, and I start off by splaying my fingers like this, putting it in, and then squishing the stuff through my fingers. That way, you've got, uh, you're mixing things a lot easier. Now, I've used a, uh, I've gone ahead and used a food processor for this. Things come out a little stranger when you use a food processor for this. I've used a uh, set of beers with this, and that's not bad, but things, again, come out a little strange texture-wise. So it's really going to be up to you what you want and what you don't want. So just go ahead and make sure everything is well incorporated. You don't have any big lumps of meat just hanging out there because those don't season well when they get put through the oven. Next, about a half a bag of peas and carrots or just put the whole bag in if you love them. Seriously. There you go. And me. The whole bag is going in. Why? I love me my veggies. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that color. Oh, man, that's going to be great. So, once again, but this time, you're going to be a little bit more ginger with it if you've got a small-ish bowl. I tend to be very miserly about my bowls, as you guys probably have figured this out. Um, I tend to not want to use a bowl any bigger than I absolutely have to. And there's an abject lesson in that. Use a bigger bowl. Okay, so I think we are about done and our oven is already preheated to 350 degrees. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get ourselves some loaf pans or what we did last night is we actually made these into patties and pan fried them. Score. I'd better wash my hands and then find those loaf pans. Okay, here we have two silicon loaf pans. These are one pound loaf pans and wonderful for this kind of thing. So, go ahead and just scoop some right on in there and don't forget the barbecue sauce. We are going to definitely need some for this. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Now, you can absolutely do this in a disposable one pound loaf pan. We've done that for years and it's so, so handy. What you do is you make a couple of them for dinner and then freeze about six more. So when you are just, you come home from work, you're dead tired, you don't want to cook but you want something wholesome, you can grab one of these out of the freezer, put it in the microwave, or put it in the oven, and you are done. Seriously, no cook, no mess, no fuss, no nothing. So, go ahead and get these about even with the top. You do want to make sure that there is a little bit of room in there because you're going to have some liquid coming out of your meat and out of your vegetables. The next thing you do, Grab yourself some of that gorgeous barbecue sauce. Slather that right on along the top. There we go. Yes. And when I'm done with this next one, I'm going to pull a couple out of the oven and let you see what's going on for dinner. So next one, go ahead and just scoop that stuff right on in there. 
and this is kind of where it gets fun. If you're doing this with kids, they would love to get their hands dirty with this and help. And it is just so easy. Uh, they can, you can direct them and using the food processor, the mom and dad always load the thing. Or the whole nine yards. And uh, happy faces on top, big score. Alrighty. Let's get us our barbecue sauce on top of here and slather that on. <laughs> there we go. So we've got a couple of really beautiful things here. Next thing, let's see what's in the oven. Okay. Oh, yes. Mm, 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 mm. Come to mama. I don't know about you, but I am ready to eat. Oh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna check the internal temperature of these with a meat thermometer. These are, these guys are done, and for uh, beef, it's beef and uh, chicken, I believe it's gonna be, beef definitely, 160 is the top. Uh, chicken, I believe is 170. Uh, pork is somewhere in between. And so when you're, when you're reading your thermometer, oftentimes you'll have, right on the thermometer, you'll have, you know, pork, 160, you know, chicken, 170, uh, beef, one, 150, stuff like that. So go ahead and find the, uh, the temperature for the meat that you're cooking and check that right in the center. You want the end of your probe to be in the center lengthwise and depth wise and not too close to the edges so there you have it from our house to yours this is a beautiful beautiful uh meatloaf and i think you guys need to see the inside of this so pardon me for just one second when i grab a plate for this this is so gorgeous so so gorgeous and the great thing about these silicon ones is the meatloaf just pops right out look at that sweet so taking it out of the pan is a whole lot easier with the silicon loaf pans and you need to see the inside of this give me a fork i'm ready to eat oh yes would you look at that? Gorgeous, gorgeous, and gorgeous. So from our kitchen to yours, definitely happy cooking, keep things tasty, and I'm ready to eat. Mmm, mmm, yes.